All right, folks, hello and welcome back to online English class. Hope you guys are doing well today. Uh, today is the first day that we're going to begin engaging in the process of reviewing for your AP exam on May 13th, which is going to require you to write uh, a prose close analysis essay. Before we do that, let's go ahead and run through our top of the week announcements. First of all, remember your discussion grade procedure. You know what to do. Enough on that. Second of all, all right, uh, you should have already completed your unit six test and turned it in by Tuesday at 3 p.m. Okay. Um, that means that if you're in the honors class, uh, your remaining responsibility is your quarter four essay. Do not turn this quarter four essay into me like tomorrow or the next day uh, or at the beginning of next week in your haste to be complete uh, uh, or done with the class. Uh, sit with it. Make sure that it is the best representation of your best writing possible, uh, as close to perfect as you can possibly make it. So you need to sit with that. Uh, you need to edit it carefully and turn it in from May 18th to May 22nd, okay? Now, uh, if you are in the AP class, you need to be working through uh, the process of preparing for your AP exam. Please, during this period of time, uh, table your quarter four essay and your MWE. If you're behind on that MWE in the quarter four essay, well, it just means that from May 14th to May 22nd, you're going to be busy. But right now, I'd like for you to uh, uh, deploy all of your undivided attention uh, to the process of preparing for your exam, okay? And, and part of the steps of that exam, to that end, you need to make sure that you've read the 2020 AP testing guide, that you have completed your AP exam day checklist, and that you completed your testing demo uh, by May 6th. All right, please don't be that guy or that gal who says, oh, what am I supposed to do? Uh, 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 all right, I'm telling you what to do. All right, don't wait on me, your teacher, to explain and spell out every single step that you need to take in preparation for your exam, okay? I'm telling you right now that you need to take personal responsibility for the information that are in these documents. That's why I'm giving them to you. That's why they've been published, not just given to teachers, but made available to students, all right? You have a personal responsibility to know exactly what is required of you, right? Uh, don't look to anyone else besides yourself to know what to do on that exam day, right? So take responsibility. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and turn our attention to uh, the, the, the review process. Now, today, what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to offer you a kind of overview of the basic content that you're going to need to know and study in order to be armed with the appropriate kind of ammunition uh, to uh, unpack and to effectively accomplish uh, the, 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 the kind of prompt that you're going to be faced with. All right, We're not going to be looking specifically at prompts uh, and, and analyzing them uh, and, and uh, breaking down sample essays and talking about how to construct your essay response. Uh, we're going to be doing that later in our review guide, but today what we're going to be doing is simply talking about the, uh, uh, the skills and the knowledge that a good literary prose analyst should have, all right, should already have when they're walking in uh, to the exam, all right? So uh, to that end, the first uh, and, and most basic thing that you need to understand is what literary prose close analysis is, what it means to conduct a, a prose close analysis. Well, first of all, right, literary prose close analysis requires you, the reader, to construct, right, in essay form, a reasonable reading of a text, all right? So what do we mean by reasonable reading? Well, what we mean by that is a reading that takes the textual phenomena, all right, the stuff that's actually in the text, and uh, uh, evaluates the meaning, the impression that is communicated uh, through that text. Well, uh, literary art at its core is just meant to be a representation of human behavior. It's an opportunity for people to meditate on the meaning of human experiences. All right, and those experiences uh, can be uh, uh, deeply spiritual or theological, like for instance the novel *Heart of Darkness*, as it sort of offers a kind of nihilistic vision, a modernistic nihilism, right? Or it could be uh, more simple and straightforward uh, 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 about uh, a, a character just longing uh, to to experience fundamental kinds of things like love uh, or esteem and respect uh, and a sense of belonging, such as the novel *Frankenstein*, right? So. There's a wide range of impressions that are developed in literary prose, but very much like poetic analysis, right, 
ultimately what your job is, is to determine what the dominant impression of the text is, what, what impression is being conveyed by the text, and secondly, right, not just, not just saying what impression is being conveyed, not just interpreting what is being said, but how that impression is conveyed and developed through the use of literary craft. Okay, so by analyzing the craft of the text, all right, you are supporting your, uh, the, 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 the rationality. You are offering a, offering a rationale for your interpretation, your assertion of what the text actually means. Okay, so in a prompt such as this, which you spent some time with earlier last semester, you wrote a test about this actually, right? In a prompt such as this, all right, uh, where you get an excerpt from a novel, uh, 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 of which you have not read, right? What you have is a scene, all right? And this scene develops a pretty simple impression, all right, uh, about uh, the, the sort of fo the, the focal character uh, in the scene. And D.H. Lawrence uses a number of different literary techniques in order to develop that impression. And the impression is pretty simple. She longs for a kind of uh, interior mental life that she doesn't have. In a word, she wants to be educated, all right? She, she, wants to, she wants to have a kind of theological and philosophical education, all right? As an uneducated person, she doesn't, she doesn't know what it's like to be educated, and she wants to be educated. It's kind of a mystery to her, okay? Her, hence her obsession with the vicar, all right, uh, and, 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 and who the vicar is and, and how this vicar has this, this strange uh, power uh, that isn't based on his vitality. It's not a physical power, right, uh, but rather a kind of intellectual or spiritual power, and she wants access to that, okay? Uh, uh, she finds uh, that, uh, that she finds uh, the vicar's power uh, and, and influence to be something that she also desires, all right? That's a very simple impression, all right? Uh, but then your task is not only to discern that impression through a reasonable reading, but then to explain how that impression is expanded on and communicated through the use of literary craft, okay? So, in order to do this, you need to be good at two things. One, you need to be good at interpretive reading, Okay, but how are, do you become better at interpretive reading? Well, number one, first, first tip I would give you uh, for being better at understanding what a text says is do not overcomplicate what the text is saying. All right, when it comes to literature, all right, uh, uh, oftentimes the deepest and most significant kinds uh, uh, of representations of human uh, uh, experience are very sort of basic or quintessential kinds of experiences, right? Uh, the, this, the experience of, of being ashamed of one's own daughter, right? Yet, simultaneously loving that daughter, which is uh, re represented to us in uh, the excerpt from Thomas Hardy's The Mayor of Casterbridge, another short uh, uh, prose uh, close analysis prompt that we've taken a look at uh, and that I quite like uh, from a past AP exam, okay? So, uh, first of all, I would say don't overcomplicate uh, what the text is trying to convey. And second, all right, uh, the, the, the second way to improve your understanding of what a text is communicating is to understand more how a text communicates, right? How a piece of prose uh, uh, communicates using literary craft, all right? So to that end, we need to understand uh, uh, so the sort of basic areas of a text that the College Board and really any kind of literary analysis is going to require you to pay attention to. And the first, all right, uh, uh, th that is articulated in the College Board's course content and will be evaluated on this exam is your knowledge of character, your ability to analyze character, okay? So, uh, uh, obviously, there's this sort of summary of what a character is. It allows a reader to study and explore a range of values, beliefs, assumptions, biases, and cultural norms represented by these fictional representations of human beings. Okay, uh, And then the skill that they want you to have is to be able to explain how a character functions in a particular passage. Okay, what do we mean by that? Well, well, uh, the character is meant to be a conduit of the impression that the author is trying to convey. Okay, uh, literature obviously attempts to convey impressions, but uh, indirectly, uh, unlike, say, an essay or a piece of philosophy. It's just direct communication. Why do we do that? Because 
uh, a million reasons that we talked about back in the poetry and, uh, and prose units. We won't go back into that now, okay? But essentially, you need to explain how that character functions, how it works in the process of cultivating that dominant impression. All right. What are some important areas that the college board would want you to pay attention to? Well, for one, they would want you to explain how textual detail, all right, uh, any number of textual detail, dialogue, syntax, uh, diction, levels of diction, uh, all of these literary elements that you as an AP literature student have been discussing and thinking about and required to think about all throughout the course of the unit, uh, sorry, so, uh, the, the, the course, how textual detail uh, details reveal a character's interiority, reveal their perspective, their value system, and their motives. All right, so that's one uh, a kind of skill that you need to have. It's just a very basic kind of thing, but again, something that that you just need to consciously reflect on. All right, then. Uh, you might want to think about how a character changes, or, or the word that we typically use is develops, how they become three-dimensional, how they add dimensions uh, to their characters, right? Uh, 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 th th this process might uh, be from them changing, or it might be from them remaining unchanged, okay? So you, you think about uh, Lear. Right by the end of the play, uh, he sort of gestures towards changing, but then in the final sense, uh, troublingly remains unchanged. Now that uh, that that lack of change is not uh, the absence of character development or the absence of characterization, but rather a conscientious form of development that illustrates Lear's interiority, his failure to fully come to grips, to to fully justify, to fully rectify his errors because he does not uh, completely change. Okay, so. Uh, in a smaller piece of prose, you, you obviously don't know the whole uh, 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 story uh, of this text that you're reading, but you can watch a character develop from, say, the first paragraph to the final paragraph, or from uh, the, the implicit uh, uh, starting point of that character that is implied in the language of the text. Like, for instance, this character be be begins as uneducated and ends in a position of longing after a richer intellectual life for whatever reason, right? You, you as students uh, who are required to have rich intellectual lives are like, no, don't do it, big mistake, right? So uh, you, you might also consider, uh, the College Board says that you should consider the function of contrasting characters, okay? Uh, and, and consider how textual details reveal nuances or complexities in characters' relationships, okay? Huge uh, point in, in this passage that describes, uh, that is uh, ultimately requiring you to analyze the portrayal of the complex relationships between the two characters. Well, how do we get that com a, a, a notion of that complex relationship? Uh, 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 relationship. What is the nature of the complexity? Well, that's revealed to us in Hardy's textual detail, the nuances of, of his textual detail, okay? So these are just concepts basic to analyzing character, okay? Uh, and, and how that character's choices, actions, speech, emotional responses, longings, uh, explain or explore or reveal that character's complexities, that character's perspective, that character's values, all right? The, that is uh, the, the big point of analyzing character in literature, okay? Same thing with setting, all right? They want you to understand uh, that setting uh, not only depicts a time and place, but also conveys values associated with that setting or contextualizes the characterization of the character. It can oftentimes setting can be used as a symbol, all right, uh, to communicate a kind of metaphorical uh, 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 internal reality about the characters that are set in that place, okay? Uh, classic example of this would be Dante's Inferno. Pilgrim starts in the dark woods, right? Uh, the whole, uh, the, the dark woods is clearly not just a time and a place. Oh, he's in a dark wood. Okay, cool. Been there before, right? But, but very obviously a symbol of an internal reality for that character. Well, uh, uh, the same is true of the uh, relatively provincial setting that is described in this passage, okay, that imitates the kind of uh, 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 very simple life that this woman has been given uh, and that she is not uh, satisfied with, okay? Uh, so D.H. Uh, uh, Lawrence seems to explore this woman's desire for a, a more sophisticated, urbane intellectual life. 
which by the way, uh, in the novel, The Rainbow, uh, doesn't necessarily give her all the freedom and joy that she that she expects from it, but it is indeed something that she is characterized as desiring in this particular passage, okay? Later in the novel, she sort of learns more about it, becomes less naive, and, and understands that, it, you know, a provincial life, an agrarian life, is not all bad, okay? It is, in fact, quite nice to live simply, okay? All right, uh, the next phase, right, uh, uh, of the, 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 the sort of basic literary uh, uh, devices uh, and, and basis of literary craft uh, that you should understand and know about and be able to analyze uh, in, a, in a deep and significant way, all right, uh, is uh, beyond setting, right, which you're going to want to talk about the function of setting in the text and how uh, that setting is revealed through textual detail, uh, how it uh, conveys uh, important information about the narrative, okay? Narrative refers to the organization of events and the development of a kind of plot, all right? Uh, or also, uh, it illustrates relationships between a character and that setting, okay? As I discussed in uh, the Inferno example, all right? Uh, the next phase is the structure of a text, okay? Uh, and the structure of a text uh, in prose can refer to the larger plot. Now, uh, are you going to be able to analyze the plot of the entire uh, uh, of the entire novel from which this the scene that you're going to analyze is going to come from? Well, obviously, no. Okay, that's not what you're supposed to do. But in the same way that uh, uh, a novel has a plot, a scene has a kind of structure. Okay, and that that scene introduces us to important kinds of conflicts, all right? And those conflicts reveal what the characters are up against, what the characters are struggling to obtain, okay? So understanding how the structure, okay, the plot structure, the narrative structure of the passage helps convey the interiority of the characters and what is at stake, the impression, all right, that is at stake in the passage is, is helpful. But not only that, very similar to the ways that we studied uh, stanzas and the construction or the structure of a poetic text, all right, and how the structure of a text helps communicate and embody and make palpable its meaning, so too, all right, prose, to a lesser degree, uses the structure, uh, uh, the pacing, the paragraphing uh, uh, of the text in order to communicate meaning. All right? It might do so uh, uh, depending on the passage by offering us juxtapositions all right, that offer us uh, uh, maybe a description of one character up against in another paragraph the description of another. Okay, uh, There's a million different ways that this can iterate itself, but the general principle that you need to understand as a prose analyst is that structure in a text helps convey meaning. Uh, not just in poetry, but also in prose. And that contrast in that structure can help convey meaning. All right? Uh, and that uh, an, an episode which you're going to be analyzing can help convey meaning. All right? So uh, obviously, you're not going to be able to uh, explain uh, the plot order of an entire narrative. That's not possible. Uh, in, in prose close analysis because all you get is one episode. You haven't read the whole novel, probably, right? But you can analyze sequencing and structure of the text, contrast within that structure, okay? Uh, and and, and you, can, you can analyze how those contrasts develop conflicts in a text, okay? And how those conflicts develop meaning. Okay, that's, that's, that's something that you need to understand. Now, secondarily, please follow me here, secondarily, all right? When we talk about structure, what we are talking about is how the texts are uh, uh, put together, how it, is, how it has been constructed, built by the writer, okay? So uh, uh, make sure that when you're talking about uh, contrast in the structure of the text, you're talking about contrast in the paragraphing uh, and in and, and the, the, the overall uh, presentation of the information in uh, the, the, the building blocks of the structure of the text, which are paragraphs, uh, uh, sentences, and things of that nature, okay? The next thing that you need to understand is narration and narrative voice, okay? So, uh, as we discussed in our content, le content lectures in which we studied narrative perspective pretty extensively, right, a narrator or a speaker, right, the, we're not going to be analyzing a poem, the speaker of a poem is, is your perspective, but 
uh, very much like that in, in prose, the narrator is the controlling perspective that emphasize certain details, that focus uh, or focalize the reader's attention on certain character's impressions, okay? So the narrator uh, is going to uh, function, all right, uh, significantly in uh, developing the meaning of the text as well, all right, uh, by using things like word choices, details, syntax that reveal the narrator's perspective uh, also even as, all right, they characterize uh, the characters in that, um, uh, okay, through the tone, the, the, the attitude with which that narrator uh, develops and characterizes that, that speaker. For example, in this passage, right, uh, the narrator's tone toward the woman is very much approving, very much empathetic, very much compassionate, all right? Uh, he, he doesn't uh, narrate her desires for an education uh, as if she's a silly woman who needs to go back, you know, uh, to churning butter. But rather, the, the narrator seems to have a, 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 an understanding that the limitations placed on this woman's life are, are unjust and that her longings after fully realizing her humanity by achieving a kind of more self-conscious uh, intellectual and uh, theological life it is good, all right? It doesn't mean that churning butter is bad, but the narrator seems to imply that uh, uh, pursuing that kind of intellectually rich life is also good and should be an opportunity that is widely available, not only for women, but for men and for society at large, okay, in a humane uh, in, uh, uh, humane society, okay? So that is uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, connoted to us or suggested to us uh, very very obviously in the tone, the attitude of the narrator toward uh, his primary object, the, the, the woman, all right? Okay. Uh, finally, we want to talk about figurative language. Okay, we want to talk about uh, uh, the the use of language in literature uh, to connote certain meanings. Okay, uh, and, and very basically, right? We think about comparisons or representations, which would be a symbol, uh, or associations, right? Which would be language that simply operates connotatively. Now, we talked about this extensively in our poetic unit you need to transfer that understanding to your analysis of prose, okay? The level of, uh, uh, of connotation analysis is a little bit different in prose. Prose is less reliant on connotation. You can read it a little more straightforwardly, okay? But language, any kind of language, especially literary language, especially figurative language, is always going to rely on some level of connotative meaning, okay? So this is going to require you to be able to analyze specific word choices, all right? Uh, uh, identify symbols and explain the function of a symbol, uh, okay? Over and over again, they use that word function. What do they mean by that? How it functions in developing the meaning of the text. How it, okay, so how the impression is conveyed through the use of literary craft, okay? So all of these areas character, setting, structure, narration, and figurative language. These are the basic elements of literature that the College Board has decided, and I would agree with them, right? These are just the basic elements of literature. Uh, it's, it's, what, uh, it's, what, it's the raw materials that literary impressions are developed using, okay? So you need to, uh, A, master these concepts, and then B, expand your ability to describe and deepen your knowledge of uh, how these uh, things iterate themselves in the text so that when you see something in a text, you can call it what it is, all right? Well, how do you do that? How, how are you going to expand your understanding? Well, my last point for the day is going to be this. You should begin now independently according to your own personal responsibility, because if I did this for you, then I would be here all day, all right? Uh, I would be talking through this information uh, 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 nonstop, all right? So I'm going to let you do this independently, but I'm going to tell you what you should do. First, all right, you can go to the expanded AP Literature Comp uh, and Composition Course Content Summary which is right here. This is attached on RenWeb. It has all of these big ideas and skill categories that we just discussed, 
but it also has expanded essential knowledge that is associated with those skill categories, okay? And you'll find that we've discussed these, whether directly or indirectly, through the course of the year. That these, uh, that, that, that you probably already know this stuff about the way that character works, all right? But i just like for you to lay eyes on it so that it's, it's ready at hand. So that it's not burrowed uh, back in the depths of your brain, but, wa but rather at the forefront of your brain. So that when you see an unfamiliar piece of text, you can go directly into that uh, sort of cabinet of knowledge, uh, and it's all right there, ready at hand. Okay, So you can expand your knowledge of these things looking through the course content. All right? Again, available on RenWeb. You can also all right, re return to the content lecture slides. All right, that I uh, uh, developed over the course of our, uh, our units one and units two, okay, back when we were studying basic prose by reading short stories, okay? And I lectured about character, setting, plot structure, narrative voice, uh, and literary style or figurative language, okay? Uh, uh, and, and those are available on RenWeb as well. We've got our plot lecture, point of view lecture, character lecture, setting lecture, symbolism lecture, uh, uh, our style lecture, uh, our irony lectures, Okay, some of this stuff doesn't show up directly uh, in the language of the course description, but it is implied in the language of the course description. When they talk about contrast, a lot of times they are referring to irony, okay, which functions through the use of a kind of contrast. All right? It would be good for you to have that kind of language, again, ready at hand. All right? You can also study the glossary of literary terms in your course textbook. Okay, clearly you can skip over the, 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 the terms that are directly related to poetry, all right, because there's no poetry section of the exam. But mastering uh, uh, the, 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 the wide array of literary terms that are associated with prose uh, and, and, uh, and the way that literary prose are constructed and can be described uh, is probably a good idea. Okay, if you want to do that, you can, all right. I wouldn't make this the main emphasis of your study, but it's something that perhaps you could spend some time with. And finally, all right, uh, you can go to uh, a link that I've provided uh, to you here uh, uh, to see the College Board's series of review videos for the upcoming exam. Okay, so let me uh, let me show you this. The College Board has uh, produced a series of videos uh, uh, that, okay, so uh, all in preparation for these, these exams. And they're pretty long, and I'll be honest with you, I, I've watched a number of them, and they're pretty boring, okay, but uh, uh, probably no more boring than what you're getting right here. And, and also, uh, straight, from the, uh, straight from the horse's mouth, you know, uh, so you can uh, talk about uh, you can go ahead and skip the contrast and po pro poetry. You can skip the longer fiction and drama lectures. All right, uh, all, all of this stuff is not going to be directly related to the information uh, that is on, uh, evaluated on the exam. But you can go to your prose review. All right, uh, you can watch uh, the videos on characterization. All right, you can watch uh, the video on setting. Okay, uh, 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 basically what they're going to tell you in that video, I, I watched it. All right, uh, it, it is essentially that setting helps reveal character interiority in literary prose, and they're going to offer you some base examples uh, of uh, how that iterates itself in some sample text. All right, it takes them a really long time to do it, uh, but that's essentially what they're going to do. All right, uh, uh, and you, you can deal, you can you can work through any of these. Okay, uh, they move from the content stuff into uh, the the composition stuff, which is, by the way, exactly what we're going to do. Okay, we're going to talk about uh, uh, we're going to we're, we're going to talk about writing effective thesis statements. We're going to talk about just deconstructing prompts. We're going to do all of this stuff as well. Okay, so if you want to uh, peruse these videos, all right, if you want to work through those videos on your own time, if you want to just watch a few minutes of each, skip through them, uh, watch them on triple double quadruple time I don't care okay but it's a resource that's out there for you and I want it I wanted to draw your attention to it okay essentially I'm going to be offering you that information in my own way but I'm not the best communicator in the world and there are definitely other voices out there that can be helpful to you uh, if you would like to access them here's a great example of some helpful voices all right so uh, 
We are not going to talk through the composition skills and knowledge uh, necessary for hacking this exam well, but like I said, like I promised at the beginning, I'm just going to get, I just attempted to give you an overview of the content uh, that is at stake in the pros close analysis review. Tomorrow, we're going to go ahead and get into the process of unpacking prompts and, and watching uh, some of these literary elements begin to develop impressions, all right? Have a great day.